Hey traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is 2019, January 3rd. Um, so welcome to the new year. And let me know that you can hear me and everything and see the screen. And then we will just get on with it, as they say. <clears throat> Perfect. Happy New Year, Jamie. What's up, Michael, friend? How are you? Okay. So I actually wasn't even going to do a webinar um, this week. I was going to wait till next week to really get it started. But after all the all the crazy uh, flash crash moves last night, I was like, well, you know what? It's kind of worth it. So we will do one today. It might be a little shorter. Um, I, I did have to move back an hour. Had some stuff I had to take care of. But uh, we are you know, going to look at some charts here, um, here in the early early going of the new year and give you an idea of some good levels and whatnot and maybe try to try to answer as best we can um, what we think about what happened uh, last night and what it means right if anything so I want to keep it pretty broad here again uh, early in the new year especially this is kind of a weird you know weird year uh, in the sense that you're you're starting the new year uh, on a Wednesday Right. And so you have like this half week, um, you know, the flash crash last night, probably in part due to uh, the thin conditions, not just the fact that it's, you know, after U.S. and before Asia, but also, uh, you know, the first trading day of the year, second trading day of the year, I guess, you, technically. And, um you know, there's an old saying like these half weeks like this, no one comes into the office except for the interns, right? I mean, it's really understaffed, and um, you know, an algorithm kind of loses its, goes crazy, or someone hits the wrong button. I don't know. Either way, <clears throat> um, it's certainly a kind of actually somewhat a welcome change to uh, some of the lackluster FX action that we did have. Uh, late in 2018, a lot of 2018 actually, but uh, let's go to our DXY chart. Okay, so DXY, this is the four hour chart we've been following for uh, a long, 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 long time. And guess what happened? So this we broke down, this would actually be on January, excuse me, this actually would have been on January 1st. Um, a lot of dealing wasn't even open then, but are still prices and you actually hit support. So we were looking at 95.60 ish, right? And we got the low was 95.65. So we got a bounce and lo and behold, guess where yesterday's high was? It's on the upper parallel. So this is actually um, quite interesting slash instructive in that Price is adhering to this bearish um, channel or bearish fork, okay, um, in uh, in DXY. So, you know, that's to me, it's a good sign in terms of gives you something to work with. Um, this is again primarily euro, right? Um, so, you know, all the crazy stuff that happened in Aussie is not going to be in here. Um, yen, you'll see a little bit of that, but not much. OK, because the I think yen dollar, I think yen might be like nine or 11 percent of dollar index. Right. Most of it is euro, as we know. So this gives us certainly something to work with as we head into uh, the end of this first week uh, in terms of in terms of the euro. OK. Um, if we bring up a euro chart specific Right, specifically Euro chart. Nothing's changed here, folks, in terms of you know the longer term stuff, still at support, blah, 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 blah. Right. <clears throat> Talked about 113 essentially as uh, your critical level. I'm not gonna harp on this too much because I mean, how much can we talk about one number being so important after a while? It's like, okay, we get it, right? So You've got 113. We 113.09 is the low um, here last night when the euro didn't really do much, um, right? It was kind of all Aussie and yen. Pound actually kind of joined in a little bit, 
just because it's the pound. So my, why not? Um, but other than that, that was about it. It was really Aussie and yen. So, you know, in, and all the Aussie and cross in particular, but, um, you know, something to work with here. I mean, you know, let's take it step by step, hour by hour here, day by day, uh, 1425 or so short term would look like maybe a little pause area potentially uh, weekly open is actually 1436 and if you got a little pullback of something uh, overnight might be looking at an order to buy around 1370 okay so that could be something to work with um, I want to move on to more like the Aussie here and dollar yen and some indices and all that stuff. So I threw this out on Twitter last night. You see where we got the low last night? Right there. That is the April 2009 low. Here, I'll make this a little more, a little thicker. and right over here which is the june 2004 low all right it's also by the way the high from 2000 or 1999 um so kind of crazy like how big these levels uh, are how far you know how long ago they were but actually seemingly uh, in play so you know i guess the question that needs to be asked is was this flash crash of sorts or whatever you want to call it. Uh, well, I guess it was a flash crash. Is this, <clears throat> does that uh, bring an end to a larger decline, right? Like, is that it, right? It's not like um, the, the decline, you know, his, is new. I mean, the Aussie's been dropping since January, so for a year, okay? Um, we topped last January 2018. Here we are in January 2019, first trading day of the year, second trading day of the year, and you get a flash crash. A lot of times, we you know, these flash crashes can indicate, um, you know, a pivot, right? A low of sorts, a turn. And that's, you know, I guess where my head's at, but like, let's take it, you know, just take it, take it, you know, one trade at a time here. Okay. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to take you into a shorter term chart. <clears throat> So we've actually come right back into um, the former lows. So you've got 70.20, right? That's the low from October. And you've got a uh, number of lows here, 12.27, um, 1.1, 1, 1, right? Uh, 70.12 and 70.16, and here we are, 70.16. So let's go to a shorter term chart now. So we were a short from like December, 20th at 71.30 and we got taken out of 69.25 <clears throat> remember our target was this line right here this magenta line which was just off of off of these lows right so we got out um basically right here okay and then of course it flash crashed set, set up to 67 65 uh, but we are now coming into resistance again so I kind of jumped the gun I guess probably in shorting again but we did short you know 50 pips higher than we got out um, the reason for shorting was you can see here if I draw this hold on for All right, sorry. Um, the reason for doing it here was we had the channel. This is a shift fork, by the way, that goes all the way back to this high. And uh, I wanted to short, reshort on the set. That's why, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why I threw the order out last night. Is we were shorting here, okay? And we did actually, <clears throat> excuse me, it did trigger to the tick. Uh, and then we traded back down, you know, about uh, 25 pips. And then we, we've, you know, came back higher but it was worth a shot and the target was actually on this close here which is the low hourly close at 68.67 so I threw it 
you know, up at 6870. So from here, how to manage this, how to work with this, you know, if we get back up to the 7035 area, the stop right now is 7052, right? And that's not going to change. It's either going to get a hit or it won't. Um, but the area up here, 7035, is going to be kind of your critical resistance area. And what I'm going to watch for in the coming, you know, days um, or hours, depending on how the market wants to trade, is for support somewhere within this channel. Okay, <clears throat> this is hourly chart, but you can see the levels within the channel. OK, so um, let's just make an argument. Let's just say that we do trade back up to. Let's say we trade back up to here. OK. <clears throat> Your 618 is going to be the exact hourly close 6866. OK. That's interesting. So that to me is still the biggest level to pay attention to. Okay, right here, that level. And maybe it's over here somewhere when it happens. I don't know. Um, but the other two important levels I will pay attention to are the center line, which you can see was support and resistance for a time last night. And that's going to be at this point uh, essentially just below where the entry was at 69, uh, it's going to be 69.60 or so right, right here. And the other one, of course, um, is the line that goes off of the lows back to December of 2017, okay? And that is going to be essentially 69, you know, 20. So two levels that I think are probably most important are going to be, uh, as far as supports are concerned, are going to be 69.20 and 68.67, all right? With resistance up here at 70.30, 70.35, um, so I actually do anticipate that this short still works um, as long as you're within the channel. So Ty says buy pullbacks or sell rallies. Well, Ty, I actually think it's both right here. So selling rallies um, up against, you know, into 7035 against 7050 ish. And I'd be looking to buy pullbacks not until probably 6920 and maybe at 68.70, all right? So those are the levels, here, 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 okay? That's where my head's at on the Australian dollar, all right? Now, if we take a look at um, Kiwi dollar, Kiwi is a buy pullback. Uh, this is a chart from last night. This thing nailed support, like perfectly, perfectly. Um, what, okay, Ty wants a picture of the Australian dollar. Yeah, you got it, man. So here, this is an hourly chart, Ty. Oh, you want to see something really cool, too. Here's another trick. So remember the extension? Guess what the extended parallel the width of it, hit that low to the tick. You see that? I mean, tell me that's not pretty cool. <clears throat> All right, so um, with Aussie, I'm kind of like, you know, we're 20 pips from resistance. Um, jump the gun on shorting again, but kind of like more likely to do it since we had already taken 200 pips out of it and we're shorting 50 pips higher than where we got out uh, but whatever kiwi is a buy dip trade okay uh, we hit support here again nailed support like that is just a beauty okay and we are now you know about 100 pips off the low so from here i would be looking at <clears throat> We'll be looking at buying some, uh, sorry, buying, uh, da, 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 buying probably between, I would say 6630 and 6640, right? 
66.32 is actually the close where, the, where you close the four hour chart. So it's where you closed um, following the, you know, kind of the flash crash. Oh, there wasn't much of a flash crash in Kiwi, right? We talked about that earlier. It's mostly Aussie and Yen. And then 66.40 is actually a new square root level. So new square root level is very exciting. Um, 66.30 is also the 618, right? Remember that? 618. Six one eight, okay. <clears throat> and yeah, we're looking up towards about sixty seven fifty sixty, and uh, then kind of reassess. So if you get up into that region, uh, we'll be expecting uh, maybe a pause or something like that, and then we'll take it from there. See what see what the market wants to do. But from here, where you've bounced off of the New Zealand dollar, um, this to me is. A no doubter, a buy dips stops under 65.90. So we'll be looking at again. I think 66.34 for a long um, minimum target 67.50, and then we'll see what happens from there. Okay. All right. So that is the New Zealand dollar. Um, let's dollar CAD. So dollar CAD, and this, by the way, you can see this. This has got to be a bad spike or a bad tick or something on this chart because I'm not seeing this on any other um, <clears throat> any other platform but pulling back beautifully from the upper um, parallel we talked about uh, this being good resistance uh, for a couple weeks and we pulled back from it in dollar cad excuse me your first big level here is going to be around 33, you know, 75, 85. Essentially, you're looking at the highs from June 27th, and you're looking at this blue parallel, which if you zoom in on it, you can see it was resistance, it was resistance, and it was support for the final time on 12-12 before you went for your run. So looking down towards here, there's the opportunity uh, for a short, um, I would want to do it back near, remember we talked at 35.54 being a volume spot. I'd want to do it back near there. You know, you've got 35.54, also old support. So like these, these lows over here. Okay. That's going to be 35.65. You know, so I know we're talking about pretty big ranges here, but Hey, this is a new year. This is thin. This is a thin market right here. Okay. We are early into uh new year not everyone's back on the desk do not be surprised to see you know a little more surprising uh ranges larger ranges than what we were used to obviously not just in 2018 at the end of it but kind of throughout 2018 you can get these bigger moves and uh, it'll be the kind of market where we want to leave orders at advantageous levels right we want to leave orders to trade you know shorts at 3550 uh 565 you know these faster markets like this are better in, in my opinion, I like these faster markets, right? Market moves with volatility, um, you know, and quote unquote more uncertainty, but it's more predictable. The levels are better, uh, you know, than those slow markets that don't do a whole lot. So if you can get back up into this region, um, that's a short, uh, you know, targeting, you know, 33, uh, you know, 80 area or so, and then take it from there. So, yeah, um, you can see that. You know, kind of saying that both uh, in the commodity currencies from here may be looking for a little bit more, um, you know, a, a turn of from this this recent move, but then looking to buy dips on commodity currencies, which means, you know, buy Aussie, buy Kiwi, sell dollar cat. Okay, um, dollar yen. Let's go there. So. Incredible flash crash move last night, and noted the. Oh, here it is. Hold on. Not a coincidence, right? Where we found support. I for for so long. Um, 
those of you that have been with us for a long time, you, you know that I've, I've kind of called this 105, uh, 40, 50 area, the BOJ level, right? So back in um, Jan 2014, you topped. So I can't believe I'm saying these dates. Like, man, I feel old. This is five years ago to the day. We traded 105.43, and that was a big high. Um, back on uh, October 2014, before BOJ went bazooka, right, on Halloween, there was a big low at that level as well. Okay, it was also the yearly open, by the way, for 2014. Support again back in May of 2016 uh, as things were kind of falling apart. Uh, it was resistance right before the election, the presidential election in 2016. Uh, once you broke through that, we had that incredible run into the end of 2016. And then you consolidated around it actually um, last March before we had another run higher. So you've got a really big spot down here um, in dollar yen, and I'm not so sure that it's going to be that easy to break. Ty says, what price? So I'm saying 105.43 is your price, okay? You can also see on display a little bit here, uh, go to, this is what we call daily reversal support, right? The close from 326.18, that is going to be 105.39. So just call it 105.40, 105.50, right? It's just draw a horizontal line in the chart. You'll see how big and how important that, level is. Um, now, where is resistance going to be? Uh, after a move like this, you're likely to see some back and fill in some pretty wide ranges. So, you know, you're probably unlikely to get, <clears throat> I, at least in my opinion, I don't think you're headed straight down, right? Um, I think you probably are going to get come back. I think you can come back to 109.60. Right, that 109.60 is actually the yearly open. It's also this parallel right here. This is a parallel that's based on uh, a trend line all the way back to 2015. And you can kind of see recent turns on this parallel right here. So 109.60 would be a level that I'd pay attention to. Um, again, we're going to be taking this, uh, you know, feeling out the first couple days and in, in, in weeks of the year here. I'm more likely to trade, I would say, Aussie, Kiwi, CAD, and Euro at this point than say dollar yen. Um, it just can get, it's going to get very spiky. Uh, you know, BOJ, there's a holiday yesterday in Japan, but you're going to have, you know, BOJ is going to come in. There's always the risk of them saying something. Gosh knows how far they can take, you know, um, dollar yen. They might, they say something in thin conditions, you get the thing going 111, 112. I mean, I don't know. You know, so I'm not trying to do anything until the market's crying uncle. Uh, otherwise, we wait for a little bit and let some definable short-term pattern unfold. Okay. So like if we look at it in this manner, you know, we could try to maybe put together a little... Uh, short-term slope or something like that, right? Maybe you've got something here. That's pretty good, actually. So if you're looking real short-term, I'd be looking at about 108.65, all right? 108.65 resistance, 106.64 potential range support. Again, that is your hourly close down here. <clears throat> and other than that, I wouldn't uh, get too dreamy on dollar yen. All right. So pay attention to those two levels. Okay. Uh, moving on. I want to look at just the highlight. This is going to be a shorter webinar today. Um, I don't want to get into too much until we have kind of a better feel for the year here, but I think it's important, you know, that you have these levels, especially for the Aussie, especially for Kiwi, the idea of buying a dip. Um, and even the dollar CAD levels, I think it's important to have these levels, um, you know, front and center for you 
as we uh, get off to 2019 trading. But I also want to highlight the um, I want to highlight the levels in the S&P and the NASDAQ that I'm watching. And these are actually the same levels that I've suggested watching. Ty says, I want to thank you for the updates over the holidays. They were good. Oh, Ty, you were quite welcome, my man. You know, when you're a, a market junkie like myself, you just really can't help it. So um, no problem. Um, and happy new year to you and everyone else. I don't know if I said that yet, but happy new year to everybody and hope everyone had a happy, safe holiday season. Uh, but this is the NASDAQ chart, right? So this is the NASDAQ composite and this is the same chart that we put up. Um, I don't know, maybe I put it up Sunday. Uh, this is what we're looking at. This is what I'm looking at. I'm looking for resistance up on this red line. Okay. That does not mean you can't drop first, right? In fact, if we were to get you know, a drop, let's say even a 618 drop, right? 618 drop would be 6384. This is in the composite, okay? So this is gonna be a little different than say the futures, of course, or uh, or the Qs, but I'm looking at this one because it's really the cleanest one um, at the moment. So, um, you know, might as well look at the one that's the cleanest, right? I mean, it kind of makes sense. So let's say we get, you know, a move up into this level, 6384, uh, two equal legs would be a little higher, but either way, um, you know, I'm, I'd be looking for maybe a higher low, frankly, against this. Um, and I'd be looking for resistance up here, 6775. Certainly, I wanna make quite clear, this is a sell the rallies market until there is evidence to suggest otherwise. That said, you don't want to be selling in the hole and getting being at risk of, you know, a giant squeeze. Now, we've had a big squeeze, right? <clears throat> we've had a, a big squeeze from um, the low on, on Christmas Eve, December 24th. But we still have not gotten to a level that I'd be looking at to reestablish a short position or go short, right? Um you know, I think we're headed lower. I think we're in a bear market scenario. Okay, fine. Uh, Captain Obvious, great. But the levels at which you want to operate are, are key. And at this point, I still think you could be talking closer to 67, 70, 67, 80. Okay. Um, the S&P, similar, right? The SPY chart, this is that weekly chart. You can see the center line from the the shift fork from the 2009 low. This is still this is a chart we were looking at a while ago. This is still I'd still be looking here, right? When you look at it in this manner, this big weekly reversal. <clears throat> you know, I mean, you can look and see the numbers. They're big numbers, right? Nasdaq uh, futures down 139. You know, um, S and P down 37 handles, right? This level is still the place where you would want to be a seller. Okay, it's still up there. It might be, it maybe it's one two fifty two ninety, which is the low from February. I still think it could be two fifty four seventy, which is also the median line. Okay, <clears throat> so keep this in perspective. These weekly charts like this really help you keep it in perspective. So yes, is it a is it a downtrend? Of course. Right, that's pretty clear. Market's been going lower. Have we hit some longer term support? Yes, 200 week average. So you're kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place here because do you want to be shorting the market in the hole, putting yourself at risk of like a, you know, three, four uh, percent drawdown just because you're shorting and you want to be bearish? Probably not, right? You probably want to be picking a precise level, uh, waiting for that level and operating uh, your strategy when or if it gets hit, right? Difficult to sit on the sidelines and wait for things, but a lot of times it is the best strategy. So that's where my head's at on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Those are the two cleanest charts I've got in terms of indices. Uh, and that's, you know, that's where I'd be looking for uh, resumption of the downside. If I see reason to be, you know, shorter term support, uh, you know, on, on pullbacks, I will let you know.
Okay. <clears throat> All right. So there's that. Uh, da, 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 da. What we got here. You know, so let's go real quick. I want to, because I just saw chips in here. And, um, you know, what could be a scenario for this market, right? You get an up, get a sideways, get another up, right? An A sideways B up C would be quite um, a normal corrective process, right? In which, um, you know, you get kind of a B wave triangle, like what the sideways is, and then you thrust higher. That could be something that takes place. Uh, it's actually probably even clearer in the S&P because you can see a, a three down, up, another down. So in this case, you actually have what could be a flat. Um, did the NASDAQ make a new low this morning? And it did not actually. So that's interesting too because here's this has been something that we've been following uh, or just noticing right for uh, a couple, well, I'd say months if not years. But do you see how the NASDAQ, look over here yesterday. This is the S&P futures. S&P futures did not make a new high, all right, yesterday. Did not go through that high on 1228. Guess what they did this morning? They went to a new low, okay, right below here. That did not happen in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ went to a new high, did not go to a new low, okay? You could see a higher low. That actually has been something that we've noticed uh, when the NASDAQ's leading, Whichever the way the NASDAQ's going is the one you want to follow, right? Uh, in this case, the NASDAQ would be actually kind of showing you some bullish behavior because it's 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 higher highs and higher lows. And the, that's not the case with the S&P. So that tells me maybe that um, you have a little more upside into the levels I was talking about uh, on the NASDAQ composite before you would really want to, you know, uh, go and go in big time short again. So again, that's short-term action, just an observation, but at least kind of fits with, you know, maybe getting um, getting a little more upside before it's time to time to get big, big, bad, and bearish again. All right, let's take a look real quick. I'm gonna look at the bonds, and then I'm gonna wrap it up. I actually, like I said, this is not gonna be a very long one. I don't want to sit here and talk about stuff that's unimportant. Um, Apple, pay attention to 137, right? 200 week averages here, 137 is going to be support. This is the channel from 2013. <clears throat> Bonds have gone to resistance. This is TLT, excuse me. So this is not the bonds, this is TLT, but TLT has gone up into a level that's uh, I would I would deem important. Um, actually back to where we were in January of last year, funny enough. Still have in the 30 year, still have some upside into 151. Um, but after we've, you know, done this move in TLT, I'd not be surprised to see something of a pause. Crude oil is actually acting pretty good. So. This is front month crude, which is February. Or last night, I threw up a little note that said watch for support about 45.60. That was over here. We did dip down to about 45.40, and then we came back and tested it overnight at 45.35. But now the market's turning back up, and you can actually see that you've got a bullish structure to work with here, right? 75 line resistance, 25 line providing support, not just uh, last night. Um, but also just two hours ago. So you are getting positive action in crude oil here. Um, and again, on that longer term crude oil chart, right? This is that really long term crude oil chart. This is a monthly chart. I think we go back up to 56 bucks. Okay. Then I think you probably pause for a little bit. 
<laughs> Chip says, thank God we're dying down here in Texas. I know, man. It's, uh, believe me, I, I work with, in a guy that we do oil and gas partnerships and stuff. And I mean, it's like, yeah, it's pretty bad out there. Um, Habib says, is this as in people back a fourth wave correction after fifth wave from 2008 low? Oh, my gosh. So you're going so long term. I think it is actually, um, Habib. Um, I think that. Hold on. I think I've got this chart on here. So Habib, if I can find out where the chart is on here, I will. All right. Yes. So I do think that this is a. Um, fourth wave drop. So this is the NASDAQ. As far as the S&P. I'm not so sure because it's a little different. We look at the S and the NASDAQ. I think you've got kind of like a one, a two. This is three. And that four is going to end somewhere on this line, um, which could be kind of, you know, it could take two, two to three years, frankly. OK, so. This is the fork from it. And this is also happens to be the one three line and this would be your two four line. So that's where you want to look. You know, you could end up down near 4,000. You're looking at that point, a 50% drop, you know, over the next couple of years. I have some updates that I'm working on for the longer term S&P charts. Um, at this point, obviously, the key is to know the levels, right? Maybe not so much um, what the longer term wave count is. Um, but as far as the contention of there being a big fourth wave that lasts several years, I do think that's the right interpretation. Um, in terms of the S&P specifically, I'm not so sure. Uh, I have more of a feel, I think, for the NASDAQ, which kind of makes sense because, <clears throat> excuse me, if you think about what our economy um, has become and where the big companies have been, right, the transformative companies, Apple's, Amazon, you know, Netflix, Fang, blah, 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 right? That's where the emotion's been. That's where the money's been. And that's where the clear pattern is. That's not a surprise. Um, so I do think we're down for several years. But, and I do think it's a fourth wave. And I do think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be painful as hell for most people. But um, yeah, we, you know, as far as the, the S&P is concerned, I'm not quite as certain there. All right. OK. All right, guys. So I'm going to wrap it up. Um, some really good levels to pay attention to in FX. Um, you know, in the in the equity markets, don't, you know, this quick back and forth and really thin environment. You know, don't uh, stress too much about this right now. I, I think that there's good you know, possibility that we get a little more push higher. Not sure if it's lower first, but the levels for resistance are higher. Um, I really like the Aussie chart and what we did there looking for, um, you know, some support lower. The short could still work out. Kiwi, love the idea of buying against that low. It's a huge, just a beautiful, beautiful support hold. Um, and probably the best ideas for the next couple of days. All right. And then, of course, we've still got our eye on Euro, but Euro is just being, uh, well, it's kind of being a pain in the ass, isn't it? It's like, uh, even everything else flash crashes and wipes everyone out. And, you know, I almost would have preferred Euro to flash crash and get rid of whatever's happening. And then we could go higher. Um, but maybe the relative strength in Euro is just that. Maybe it's relative strength and we're going higher anyway. So if I see an entry, I'll let you know. All right. Thank you again so much. Um, first webinar of the year in the books. And we'll get this archive for you as soon as possible. Uh, might not be up till later, but because I've got to run out and sometimes I can't get it um, in time before I leave the house, uh, but we'll have it up, you know, at some point today. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye.